Welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. I'm Christy Smith. And in our series, we take a game, we show you how to play it, and then over the course of several episodes, we actually play the game. And where possible, we put a seat at the table just for you so you can follow along, and then between episodes, help us decide what we should do next for our move. And in this way, we hope that you'll be able to really determine whether or not a game would be right for you, for your family, or your gaming group. So normally, I'm not in the show. This is something that Rodney does. And when extra players are involved, it's usually Andrea or Luke, our kids. Right. Um, but as part of the Indiegogo fundraiser that we're working on, there was a perk that when we reached a certain amount, I would come down, I would pick the game, um, and I would play the game on camera. So so we reached the goal. She has to come down and be on camera and play a game with us. <laughs> but I get to pick the game. True, true. So I had to put Mansions of Madness away, Arkham Horror, all those games. What did you end up... Because uh, unfortunately, I don't... I don't put a lot of time into playing those. <laughs> no, games. no. You don't, but there are games that we do, do enjoy playing together. Yes. You had a couple you had to pick from. Yes. Um, so how would you describe the types of games I like? Um, Probably shorter play time. Shorter play time. You don't want a 30-page rule book. Right. Preferably. Um, <laughs> you don't like hit points. Things. Yes. Yeah, I don't think you mind when there's attacking, but you don't want a lot of rolling dice and hit points and defense and attack and yeah. so on and so forth. I don't mind games with strategy, but I don't mind games that leave a lot up to luck either. Right. Like, I like Yahtzee. <laughs> yes. Well, and there's another dice game that you've been like, we've been playing a lot lately that you've been enjoying. And you talked about maybe doing it for this series. King of Tokyo. Yeah. That's, that's... a really good family game. And yeah. that's, for our family of four, that's something we all enjoy. So for this series... I've gone with something completely different than what we've been doing, and it's a word game. It's a two-person word game, and it's called What's My Word? Now, normally, I don't like word games like, well, I don't like them as much. Like games like Scrabble, because I don't feel like I have a great vocabulary, and I'm always struggling to think of what words to put together. Sort of like trivia games. They also make me feel like yeah, I don't know very tough. much. <laughs> so, But this is nice. This game never makes me feel that way. So I'm really interested in showing this is very different than the other kind of games we've played. So what I'm going to do now is we're just going to cut away. I'm going to show you guys how to play the game. And then when we come back, Christy and I are each going to take a couple of turns and then end the episode and let you guys help us decide what we're going to do for our next turn. So in What's My Word, each player gets one of these game books, and they use these to record and conceal their game word that the other player is going to be trying to guess. The game takes place over two rounds, consisting of 11 turns, where you and your opponent are guessing words that you hope will give you clues to your opponent's true word. You play the first round on this half of your book, and then the second round on this half of the book. And then you take the total points from both of the rounds, add them together, and the player with the highest total wins. I think with a game like this, the easiest way to teach it is to show you an example of a couple of turns. So the first thing that each player must do is pick a secret word. In the first round, your secret word is going to be six letters, and in the second round, your secret word is going to be seven letters. Now the word you pick should be familiar to your opponent. It can't be a, a proper name or slang or words that would include any punctuation. So let's say for my secret game word, I chose gamers for my word. I would fill it in at the top of my pad and use this flap to conceal the word from the eyes of your prying opponent. So here we go. G A M E R S. Gamers. Now, although your secret game word is concealed, you really don't want your opponent to see any of the information that you're writing down, so you'll want to maybe sit away from them a little bit or make sure you hold the book up so they can't see over to what you're writing. So in the first round, purple always goes first. In the second round, red goes first. So purple would begin by guessing a two-letter word. And you can see that they have to guess a two-letter word because in this section here, labeled purple's guess words, the first line right here, only has room for a two-letter word. So after some thought, let's say my opponent guessed an as the first word, and it's always a good practice for the guesser to spell it out loud. So they would say, I'm guessing an, A-N. And then I would write down that guess right here. And this is when my opponent might score some points. Now I would look at my game word, 
And do you notice how some of these boxes down here are directly below some of the boxes in my game word? Well, if any of the letters in the guess word are the same as my game word and in the same position, I'll be giving my opponent 1,000 points per match. But looking here, there's no A in this position and there's no N in this position here. So I won't be awarding any 1,000 point letters. However, if there is a letter in the guess word that is also in the game word, but it is in the wrong position, like this A here, then I do give 250 points for each letter that is in my game word, but is simply in the wrong position. So in this case, I would be awarding 250 points for the A and nothing for the N because the N doesn't show up anywhere in my game word. So at this point, I would announce to my opponent, you've scored 250 points, and I would write it here in the score. So my opponent has not only scored points, but now knows that an A or an N appears somewhere in my game word. So all of that is valuable information that will help them as they move forward guessing new words and trying to figure out where they might want to place an A or an N. And now it's my turn. And since I'm red, I come down here to where it says reds guess words. And I also have to guess a two-letter word. Let's say I guessed B. Well, I would say B, B, E. My opponent would then check his or her word. And then let's say my opponent said I scored zero. I would mark that here. Now, zero points is not good for a score, but it does give me some useful information. I now know there are absolutely no B's or E's in my opponent's word. And over here, let me point out, there's a really helpful guide. What this shows is a full alphabet from A to Z for each of the six positions in my opponent's game word. So, for instance, I just learned that B and E cannot possibly appear in my opponent's word, so I can cross out all the B's and all the E's from every position in the word. So now when I'm trying to think up new words for future guesses, I can easily see what letters can and cannot be in certain positions. And then later, let's say I found out that my opponent's first letter was G. I would circle it here, and then I would be able to cross out all the other letters in the first position, because I know these cannot appear in the first position, because G is sitting in there. Now before we go, let me show you one more turn. For the second turn, you can see my opponent now gets to guess a three-letter word, and let's say they guess the word sat, S-A-T. Now comparing that to our game word, we can see that there now is a letter that is the right letter and it's in the right place. And whenever I see that, I usually like to circle the letter. That helps me remember that this is going to be worth a thousand points. There's also a letter over here that's the right letter, but it's in the wrong place. The S is actually over here. For these ones, I usually put a dot. That reminds me that this is a 250 point score for this letter. And then the T, which doesn't exist at all in my game word, I just cross that out. So now I would announce to my opponent that they scored 1,250 points. Like that. As you can see, as you go down the list, the size and the position of the guess words change, allowing a player to learn new things about their opponent's word. And here on the very last turn, you can see you get to guess all six letters. So you could potentially, if you get all the letters right, earn 6,000 points, and you also get a bonus 3,000 points for guessing your opponent's word. But the important thing to remember is you don't have to guess the final word to win. You just have to get the most points, which you can see will primarily come from these first 11 guesses here. And that's how the game works. So when Christy and I play, because Christy will need to keep everything secret, I'll have to have you guys watch my board and play with me. But for the seven letter word, when we do this side, we might change it up so that you can help her. All right, we got our pads, we got our pencils. We're ready to start the game. But first, we have to write in our secret words. All right, so for my word, I am choosing Staple. S-T-A-P-L-E. Okay, I'm purple, so I get to go first, and my two-letter word is at, A-T. Okay, at, A-T. Now, if we look up here, you can see there is an A in my word. So I'm going to put a dot here to remind myself that this is the right letter, but it's in the wrong place. And the T is the right letter in the right place. So, 
very fortunate guess there. She's going to score 1,000 points for the T and 250 points for the A. So Christy, for that one, you got 1,250 points. A big start. Now I have to guess, and for my word, I am going to guess is, I-S. Okay, you scored zero points on your first word. Lovely. I enjoyed saying that. <laughs> zero points. Now that's not all bad, because it means I can now eliminate both I and S as possible letters in her word. My second word is toe. T-O-E. T-O-E. All right, so I'm going to write that in. All right, Christy guessed toe. And looking at my word, we know there's a T, but now it's in the wrong place. So it's going to be 250 points for that. There is no letter O. So I'm going to cross that out. No points for the O. And then the E, there is an E, but not in this position. So that will just be 250 points. So I'll be telling her 500 points. And your score for that is 500 points. All right, so Christy is already off to a good start. Too good of a start. We need to end that. So we're going to end this episode here. And I'm going to ask you guys to help me choose what my next three-letter word guess is going to be. So post what you think I should guess in the YouTube comments. And whichever gets the most votes, that's the one that I'll go with. You're going to have to take the one with the most votes. Yes, I will take the one that has the most votes. Why? Because <laughs> you'll get sabotaged. Why? Because I could have... People, you know, friends of mine might put in bad, poor choices. You would do that. I don't think, I don't think you would do that. I think people would do it to you without a lot of incentive. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for seeing Christy on her first and last episode of Watch It Played. <laughs> no, seriously. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next episode.